afternoon, we're going to do something really interesting called functional programming. All right, and this is a paradigm that's that's been taken off in the last however many years, four or five years or something. But essentially, what we were seeing earlier today and um, even yesterday a little bit is that we're able to pass functions around as if they were just regular old values, right? And that enables us to do some pretty interesting things. So let me, I've created this file here that we're going to work out of, and let me get this thing running. So I'll say node mon functional programming new. Okay, so there's nothing in there right now. Let's create just a basic array of some numbers. All right, so I'll say const numbers equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Now I'm going to task you with doing something with each one of these numbers. So what I want us to do is I want to be able to call a function against every single one of these, sort of one by one, right? So we'll call the function against one, we'll then call the same function against two, and three, and four, and so forth, okay? So if we were doing this in the way that we've all kind of learned as far as iterating through arrays and so forth, how would you guys imagine that would look? Yeah, something like that, right? So let's just create a function here. And we'll say something like say each value, or, or we'll say log each value, each value, okay? We're going to need to take in an array, right? So let's do that, take in our array. And then inside of that, as you said, we'll probably run some kind of a loop, right? So I'd say for let i equals 0 i less than r dot length, i plus plus, okay. But, but uh, how do I know what to do to each one of these values here that I'm going to touch? I'm probably going to need to take in some other thing too, right? What do you think I might want to take in? A function, a callback function, right? Which we're going to invoke against every single item in our array. So let's take in a callback here. And now inside here, to invoke this callback against each each element, how am I going to write that? Callback. Yes, because we are in fact invoking this callback function, right? And to get to that specific element, I can say something like array at i, right? Now let's test this out. So let's just say log each value. I'm going to pass in my numbers. And then what am I going to pass in for a callback function, do you think? Yeah. So am I going to tell me if this is right. If I go like this. Is that going to work? All right. How many people think that this is going to work? 51%. All of a sudden, all of a sudden nobody but you, like, right? Come on, people, be brave. 51% on that side of this one. Be brave. All right. So now we, we again come across this, this concept that keeps reappearing, right? It's this concept of a callback function. So when I called this function, or when, when I'm about to call this, doesn't it look like I'm also calling console.log with nothing, right? Would that even log anything? Oh, yeah, parentheses there. Yeah, see how I'm, I'm calling this function with nothing inside it. What is console.log going to evaluate to? Does anybody know? Undefined. Undefined, right? So now what's going to happen is I'm going to end up passing in undefined here, and I'm going to try to call undefined as if it's a function, right? So let's see if we get some sort of an error here. Whoa, sure enough, we do, right? Callback is not a function because this evaluated to undefined. So we've now passed in undefined here, and now we try to call undefined as if it were a function. It didn't work. Yeah, so let's do this, right? Let's just say 
Now we're passing in the entire definition of console.log. Okay, we're not actually invoking it. Okay, and if I come down here, you see that we have indeed logged all of our numbers, right? Cool. All right. So this is this is kind of one way that we can we can do things, but notice that I've had to create a variable inside here that I that ultimately I didn't really end up doing I didn't need in the long term, right? It was just something to help me iterate through. Okay. Um, also, I had to worry about creating my own loop, which is a little bit cumbersome because if you think about it, iterating through a loop is fairly trivial. Like once you kind of know how to do it, do we really need to, you know, use an I variable and such? Well, it turns out that uh, JavaScript, being that it kind of embraces a functional style of programming, has something built in that we can use with arrays if we want to call some specific function against every element in the array. And we'll see what that looks like here. So let's do, I'm just going to comment this out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say numbers. I'm going to call this function for each. And you guys can see what this is taking, right? What do we need to provide to our for each? A callback function. Okay? So if I simply put in console.log, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, hey, JavaScript, take this array right here, iterate through it for me, and then for each element that you touch, I want you to call this function, this console.log function, right? So let's do it. What the heck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened there? All right. Well, let's do this a different way. One zero two one. And it's logging the entire. Wow, that was a little odd. Hold on one second. One zero two. Okay, so that's the element and that's the index, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, this is my bad. So, this is actually how it's supposed to work. I, I was just looking at that thing. So what happens is the callback function that we provide will get three different things. It will get a reference to the element. It will also get the index of the element. And then the third thing, as you can see, it got a reference to the entire array itself. Okay. All right. So, so let's tweak our callback so it's a little bit more, I'm going to, um, kind of use this to our advantage. So I'm going to create an anonymous function in here and I'm going to say the value is the first thing that we're going to get then the second thing we're going to get is the index and then the third thing that we're going to get is the ar the array itself okay all right so then let's just console log out something like this we'll say console.log and then I'm going to put in back ticks here the value is Okay, has anyone seen this syntax before? Okay, so this is, yeah. I'm going to say the index is like this, index. And then finally, we'll, uh, we'll leave off the array part. We'll, we'll say we don't really need that, right? So let's do that. Okay. So what we've done is we've created this inline callback, which again is an anonymous function. And we've just logged out this little string where we sort of interpolated certain values inside that thing. Now, um, the question that came up earlier today is, could we just, instead of making that an anonymous callback function, could we make it a named function and use it? Yeah, no problem, right? So let's just say um, function, or actually, let's do this. We'll say 
const log vowels and indices equals this, and I'll just grab this whole definition here. Okay, so now I can just pass this in there as is, right? Works exactly the same way. Does, is this a little bit easier for you guys to read than the other way, or does it make any difference at all? It is, right? Yeah, so here it's like we're, we're declaring our, uh, our constant variable, right? And we're setting that equal to this anonymous function. So now we can simply pass in this function here and say, this is what I want to happen each time you, you iterate through this loop, or through this array, I should say. Yes? Oh, does the, um, having the anonymous function inside the for loop, is it faster than having it outside in the constant? I doubt, I doubt you would ever really notice any kind of a performance difference on that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so if this is way more readable for you, then go ahead and do it. That's fine. Yeah. All right, any questions on this? Um, how for each makes iterating through an array and sort of running a function against every single element makes that a little bit easier for us? Do you guys remember seeing something like this in, in Python? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It was something like for item in list. Remember that? Pretty similar to that, right? Okay. You're still dreaming about that? <laughs> nice. All right. It sounds like it struck, it struck a chord. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So yeah, now we're just seeing how to do something quite similar in JavaScript. Now, the difference here is that we also have access to the index as well. Which is kind of cool. If we needed to know the index for something, we will now have access to it. Versus the Python version where it's just like for item and list, mm -hmm. we didn't know what the index was, right? Yeah. yeah. Is the for each method, is that load daemon or just JavaScript? Or just you know, JavaScript. JavaScript. Yep. Yeah, you could run that in your browser. You can run it in. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that's one thing. We're not going to end up using this really at all in React, but I did want you guys just to know about it in the sense that if you if you ever need to loop through an array and run a function against every element, that's how you can do it. You can use that method. So we can use this in the algorithm function? Yeah, as long as you know how it works, you know, I'm fine with that. <laughs> all right, um, so let's move on then. The next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about this method called map. Now sometimes I actually want to transform an array in some certain way. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to double all the values that are in my array. How would we normally do that? Anyone? Double them, yeah, yeah. I want to multiply by two, right? So, so syntactically, how are we going to go about this? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, let's pretend like we didn't just learn about that. Oh, but, yeah. but let's say, okay, yeah, for loop, for loop. a for loop, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's create a function here. And then my function is just going to be called double each number. It's going to take in an array, right? Okay. And probably I'm going to create a new array. Um, because we don't want to like write over our original array. Are you guys familiar with this concept that arrays are passed by reference in JavaScript? Has that come up at all? Yeah, absolutely. So if I pass in an array to this function and I then make changes to it inside the function, I've made changes to it everywhere. It has oh, been changed. Exists. I've now yeah. mutated. That is to it. Yes, yes. So rather than doing that, inside here, I'm actually going to create a new array. So I'll say const new array or new r, whatever, equals this empty array. And now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all those elements, right? So we're going to do our typical let i equals 0, 
i less than r dot length. Oops. Always do that. And then in here, what are we going to do? How are we going to get the doubled version inside this new array that I've created? Okay. Very good. Perfect. Array at i times 2. Okay. Now I want to re return that as well, right? All right, so down here, let's just say we'll create a variable. Or actually, let's just log it out. So let's say console.log. The result of doubling each number against my numbers. Okay, see so we get there. So now we have this new array that has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Perfect, right? Okay, it's kind of verbose though again. And again, we had to create this loop. Um, we had to worry about looping through the array. Kind of a pain in the butt, right? So Instead, we can use this handy-dandy function called map, which will allow us to transform an array in some particular way. So if I want to double every number, I could do that. If I want to triple every number, I could do that. So let's see how that's going to work. Comment this out. Okay, and then I'll just create a variable here. We'll say const doubled equals numbers dot map. Okay. Huh? No, we're not done yet. But you see, when, when I open up this map call, it's telling me what I need to provide, right? It's saying you need to provide a callback function. So the callback function is what's going to determine what are we doing with each value that's in this array. Okay? So I'll get a reference to the value, whatever the thing is, I'll get a reference to its index. And then I'll also get a reference to the array itself, if I, if I want it. OK? So let's create a function here. We'll say num gives back num times 2. OK? What's happening here? Can anyone tell me about that? I've got this arrow. Do I do I see the word return anywhere? No. no. It's Erica. that um, also an arrow function, but like contort syntax. Yeah. So if I have a one-line arrow function like this, what it means is that what comes after the arrow is going to actually be returned. Okay. So I've created this short, this really short inline function. What I'm saying is, the function's going to take in a number, and it's going to return that number times 2. Okay. Now let's log out what we get from that. So I'll say console.log doubled. Okay. And we're getting the exact same thing. Only look at how, how short and sweet that syntax is here, right? All we did, we didn't have to worry about the iteration part. All we had to do is say, what do we want the function to do against each one of those elements in the array? All I want it to do is take the number and multiply that number by 2. That's it. And it transformed. Notice how it created a new array for us. Okay. So if I come back and I log numbers, what do you guys think that's going to look like? It's going to look exactly the same because I did not mutate it in any sense. So if I save that here, you see my original numbers are still intact. So map does not mutate the original array. It does not mutate the original. It just creates a new array for and us. And it's use map when you're trying to affect every single element inside the Yeah, array. so if I want to transform every element in the array in a certain way, you can use map. So when you guys were doing your templating in Python, you would end up doing something like, for whatever it was in your list of elements, right? Well, in React, we're actually going to use map. We're going to map through a list with this type of syntax. It's going to be slightly different because inside our function, we're going to have what kind of looks like HTML. We'll learn about that stuff tomorrow. Excuse me. So in mm -hmm. recap, map is what is map? 
it's a method that allows us to create a new array based on an original array and trans transform each value in that original array in some specific way, depending on what callback function we provide, right? So what if I wanted to triple all the numbers? How could I do that? Yeah, I could just say const tripled, oops, not triped, equals numbers dot map, and here I could say num, and then return num times three. Okay, so now we'll, we'll log out doubled and also tripled. Okay. Pretty clean. nice syntax, right? <laughs> Very clean. And then what's the other difference between the map method and the for each method? The difference was map is actually returning us out a new array. Oh. Did for each do that? No, it just ran a function against every single element of the array. That's it. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions about how map works? Questions that the first, like uh, third, thirty, the first number is a is a what's that a parameter? Which first number is Oh, this uh, num right here? It's a parameter. Oh. Yeah, it okay. is. Okay. Exactly. So yeah, another thing about these, these one-line arrow functions is that we, we don't need the, uh, the curly braces there, mm -hmm. right? They're super simple. It's like I'm just taking some value and turning out something else. That's it. All right. Cool. So now let's move on and let's talk about this function called filter. Filter's pretty neat because sometimes I'm looking at an array and I want to exclude some elements, right? Like maybe I'm not interested in odd numbers, for instance. Okay. So how would we how would we do this on our own? Maybe we'd create a function. Okay, so I'll say I'll say get evens. Okay, my function would take in an array, right? And then um, let's say we don't want to, again, overwrite the original array, so I'm going to create a new one that we're going to return out later on. Just be this empty array. How do I get through that array? And OK, for loop, right? Standard stuff. I less than r dot length. Whoa. I'm already getting tired of doing that. <laughs> All right. So inside here, how do we how do we determine when we're going to put something inside this new array? Yeah, an if statement, right? So let's say if, and what's my condition? Array of i, okay, mod two equals zero. Then what I want to do is I want to push into my new array, right? Okay, so we'll say new r dot push array of i. All right, cool. And then at the very end of that, of course, I want to return my new array, right? All right, now let's try to run this. So we'll console log get evens against our original numbers. And what we're expecting to get is uh, what? Two, four, six, I think, right? Because my array only went up to seven. Okay. Okay, so indeed we're getting our two, four, six, so that's kind of nice. But again, the same kind of issue applies here, which is that I had to worry about iterating through this thing. Okay? So instead, we're going to try to do this in a more succinct fashion by calling on this filter method that's built in. So let's say. Let me comment all this out. Oops. All right. And then I'm going to say const evens equals numbers dot filter. OK. What do we need to pass in again? Our old friend, a callback oh, function. Man. Right? Cool. So what do, I, what do you think I want that callback function to look like? Somebody want to write that for me? 
So it's going to take in a number, right? What am I going to return? So num mod 2 equals 0. So when we, when we run the filter function, what that's expecting back is going to be a true or false, a boolean. So if I return true from a specific element, what that's going to do is it's going to keep it in my new array. If I return false, it will exclude it. Okay. So let's look carefully at what this is saying. It's saying I'm taking in a number, and then I'm going to return whether that number mod 2 equals 0. Okay. So if it equals 0, that means that it is even, and I want to keep it in this list, right? All right, cool. So let's console log that out, and let's make sure that we're getting what we expect. Evens, and there we go. We're getting 2, 4, 6, right? Same thing, though. We see this super nice syntax here that's a little bit maybe confusing to read at first. But as you guys get more used to seeing this sort of thing, it will make a little bit more sense. All right. Are we going to be using the big arrow plug line in the data? Um, probably quite a bit. Yeah, especially as we map through things, you'll be using it a lot. Um, yeah, you'll have, you'll have to get pretty used to it. Same thing with map, right? Yeah. So it's iterating, creating the new array. All we have to do is tell it what we want to, to kind of change, how we want to transform each value. Right? OK, any other questions about filter? All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, let's read through our code. <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> all right, I want to have somebody do lines 1 through 13, but you don't have to do any of the commented stuff, right? All right. So it's really only four lines. Francis. He's like, don't make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty. I'm not even looking for eye contact. I just look around. Ah, whatever. <laughs> okay. So um, we create a new array of numbers. It's not really taking anything in in the sense well, that we're like we're running like a function, right? It just is an array. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, and then uh, on line uh, eleven, 11 um, we have uh, this. Uh, what is that? Like, is that would that be like a function? Would you call it a function, or is it you're just a constant? So variable? let's yeah, let's just go from left to right. We're, yeah. we're establishing this constant, constant variable, variable, log vowels and indices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Log vowels and indices. The equal sign means that what? Um, that uh, it's going to take in the uh, value, or it, that's what it's going to. That's yeah, what it's going to be, right? We're yeah. actually assigning it to this thing over here. What are we assigning it to? Um, we are assigning it to the, uh, the value that we get from the array. No. Oh. <laughs> that's all right, though. Yeah. And this is like an easy point of confusion here, so I want right. to make sure that everyone kind of gets this. So what are we, when we set it equal like this, what are we assigning it to? The entire, the entire function definition over here, right? Oh, right, right, right. Okay. 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 Cool. Now that function takes in what? A value and, and the index and the array. The array. Anybody know why array is in like kind of light blue like that? Because it doesn't get read at any point. Mm -hmm. So if I want to tell VS Code that I that I don't really care about that variable, I could also just put an underscore, something like that. It doesn't really matter, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of giving you a visual clue. Hey, you've never used this variable at all. And the reason why you put in array to begin with is because the output includes the array. Because, yeah, because when we invoke that for each function, it's going to give us a reference to the array. I could leave it off entirely, actually, if I want to. Oh, you could? Mm-hmm. Work just the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is it um, 
Most player convention and hides. Well, this is fine. If you weren't if you aren't going to use it like we aren't, you just go ahead and leave it off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. All right. So then inside there, yeah. Francis, what are we doing? Inside it just console logs uh, the value is, and then it takes whatever that value is and does log this. Yeah. And then the index is whatever the index right. of that value. Is. Exactly. So these two things are actually going to be evaluated. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever the vowel was, we'll get that. Whatever the index was, we'll get that as well. Okay, cool. All right. Lines 15 through 31. Oh, who's on my radar? Max. <laughs> so for start to 15? So 15, yeah. So numbers for each, I guess, that we're using the log of value. Okay, so that means that this, yeah, this function is now going to get called. Are we calling it ourselves? It doesn't look that way, does it? So who's calling it? This for each method is calling it on our behalf, right? Pretty cool. It's doing some work for us. All right, so then we, we would have this function invoked how many times? Anybody know? Seven times, right? Because we had seven elements in our array. Good. All right, cool. So we got that. Let's move down here to 30 and 31. What's happening there? So it looks like constant double. So it looks like just multiplying the number that you put out with two, and then it will multiply the number two. And I know you explained math a little bit. Sure, yeah, I understand. Okay, so what we're doing is we're setting this constant variable called double, right? And then we're assigning it to the result of invoking the map method on our numbers. Map method is going to call this callback function for every single one and create a brand new array from the results of those calls. Okay? So in this case, it's going to create a brand new array of everything, of each one multiplied by two. And in the second case, it's going to create a brand new array with each thing multiplied by three. So what okay. if we just use the each double session? Is that going to work? I'm sorry, what if we use what around that one? Instead of the map, mm -hmm. filter? Filter. Oh. Isn't that just what you're trying to do anymore? So, yeah, a filter, filter doesn't allow you to actually uh, transform the value. It just allows you to say, do I want to keep this value in my new array or not? That's all it does. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, these are easy lines. Who wants to read 33 and 34? I should see like everyone volunteering. Like, yeah, give me that. <laughs> Yeah, but you were you were sweating from that reading, right? It's a tough one. All right, cool. Then we got fifty-one and fifty-three. Oh, ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so if we return true for a specific element, that means that that element will be included in the new array that's created on our behalf, right? Okay. And if we wanted that to maybe be a little bit more explicit, like we've been talking about, I could just say something like function is even, takes in a number, and then I'm going to return whether num mod 2 equals 0. Now, rather than defining an inline, I could just pass in the entire definition like this, right? And that would do the exact same thing. Okay? So if this way sort of makes more intuitive sense for you, where you, you declare a function, it's a named function and everything, and then you just pass it in, then you could do it that way as well. 
All right, everybody, let's have some thumbs on this. Yes. All right. You're doing your civic duty. Cool. Let me stop this and then. Um